check this out. I just drove in the yard with the skidoo, and when I pulled in, the possum was on the compost pile. <laughs> so I drove right up by him. He didn't move. I parked the sled, shut it off, get it off of it. We'll start walking away from the sled, and here comes the possum. Going over to the skidoo, and he climbed underneath it, and he's under there. Check it out. <laughs> he's underneath my snowmobile. See his tail right there? Hey, you. Hey, possum. Look at you. I'll have to make sure he's not in there when I take off again. He's, I like having him around. He's kind of cute. He's a novelty. <laughs> My little possum buddy. Well, hey folks, <laughs> as you can see, my little possum friend is back. He's come back to the mountain. He'll be here for a few days and then he's gone for a few days and I figured it out. <laughs> you know, he eats in the compost pile and in the process he's gobbling up coffee grounds. And I think he gets himself totally wired and then he wanders the hills for days. I like seeing him around because it's a novelty for me because like I said I've seen him dead on the roads and stuff like that but I I've never seen him like this especially up here on the mountain I always kind of assume that they were a southern animal but they kind of they're making their way up here I guess I don't know he's a novelty I like him he always looks like he just woke up but he cracks me up like I told a few friends, with his thinning gray hair and his bedraggled appearance, he looks even worse than I do. So he makes me feel good. <laughs> so anyway, he eats in the compost pile, and but there's stuff that we have, like chicken bones and stuff like that, I don't want to put in the yard. You know, I put them out in the woods, like I showed you the coyotes come and uh, squirrels and all kinds of stuff. The ravens, they all come and eat that stuff. I don't want to lure the coyotes into the yard. So, this little possum guy, I kind of feel for him. He looks like he's walking around in his pajamas. <laughs> so I'm making him a little house. I don't want to build anything. I'm just taking a barrel, throwing some stuff in, and then if he uses it, great. If he doesn't, then so what? You know? So, this is my little project I got going on. <laughs> well, this is little bottom house. Got a little entrance. He's got some shavings in the back. <laughs> Alrighty, folks, we got one possum house all set up. I'm gonna get my trail camera out here. I put a little bit of food inside and out. We'll see. I don't know how good their sense of smell is and he doesn't really seem all that smart. I mean he's got a smorgasbord up here. What else has he got to eat out here in the winter? And he takes off and he's gone like all week. So I don't know. So we'll see. He'll probably just keep going where he's been eating and disregard this altogether. So I get the camera set up. We'll see what the little possum does. I'm just having a bit of fun with it. We got a big storm coming. What the heck else am I gonna do? <laughs> the mice have learned that it's too dangerous <laughs> to try and move into the camp. So they're still taking up residency in my Jeep. In my sampan menu, they chewed that up. Look at this. I'm chewing everything up. You know, these people that write to me and tell me that, oh, they feel bad for the mice and I should catch them and let them go. And you're whistling a different tune when they're destroying everything that you own. I'll tell you what, you know, I. I I'm not a heartless killer and go kill things for no reason. I have a reason to eradicate these little bastards. You know, they ruin everything. Every one of my vehicles they're in, they're getting under the, into the 
engine and a snowmobile and everything. You know, there's no sympathy from me, I'll tell you what. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten, <laughs> eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. There's fifteen more mice. I got seventeen on the last haul. I think there was, I don't know, there's a lot, but I'm, I'm piling them up now. So I got my bag of mice here that I'm collecting for bait. And there's 15 more going in. <laughs> it's crazy. Well, hey everyone. Lots of questions have been stacking up, so I'm gonna take a moment here to address a few of them. Before I get started, however, I just want to thank everyone for all your kind words and prayers. Oh, just the response on my last video was overwhelming. I got between 1,700 and 1,800 comments on that video. I'm still not through all the comments yet. Um, the response was just incredible, very heartwarming. And I want to thank you, really. Sincerely thank you for all your kind words and your thoughtfulness. Yeah. So, I'm going to get started with some of these questions here. <clears throat> First question. There's kind of a group of questions that have a similar answer. How is your gray water system holding up? I know a lot of people were skeptical about my gray water system with the half barrels, but... It's working flawlessly, no problems whatsoever. How is your icebox working out? The icebox is fantastic. This is just fantastic. As long as Mother Nature throws the cold air around, that icebox will continue to work, keep the food nice and cold without any ice. And in the summertime, like I said before, we make the ice with the propane freezer, put in ice bottles, Works flawlessly 24 hours a day. <laughs> Lots of questions about my water purifier. Lots of questions about that coming in lately. So, I'm going to address that. First one is, how is your homemade water purifier performing? Has there been any problems with it? And would you have done anything different? Um, it's working flawlessly. No problems with it whatsoever. And I can't say that I would make any changes in the design. It went together great. It performs just wonderful. I did buy the little spigot for it, but I've never installed it. We just take the top off and then pour the water into the kettles, put it back in, fill it up, continue to use it. I will put a link down below to this nice glass dispenser. I saw some one-gallon ones and two-gallon ones. And they're very country looking, and they have a spigot right in it and a little stand. They're fantastic looking. Now, I'm going to buy one of those. So I'll put the link for that down below. Yeah, I went searching and I found some really cool looking ones that I'll share with you. All right. A lot of people must be wanting to build that purifier because they get a lot of questions, repeat questions. And I didn't put this information in the how the do-it-yourself project because I thought it was self-explanatory. But people ask, how does the water get into the bottom vessel? Well, those filters are cylinders, quite a bit bigger than this, but they're cylinders and they have a little bolt sticking down in the bottom. When you pour the water in the pot, the water slowly bleeds into the cylinder. The center is hollow. And then once the water bleeds through, 
It gets to the center and it drips down into the bottom vessel and it's all purified. Lots of people ask me, what size drill bit did I use to drill the holes in the bottom of the pot? I don't remember, it might have been a half inch, but just any time you're going to drill a hole that you're going to pass a bolt through, drill the hole just slightly larger than the bolt. That's it. Pretty simple. But that's all I did. Okay. I'm going to put a link to those filters down below because people are always asking, does it filter out this, that, or the other thing? I'm just going to put the link to the filters. You can click on that if you have any questions because all the specs will be there and answer all the answers that you want. People ask me, why didn't I put in the fluoride filters? Well, we're not on town water up here, man. We are way out in the woods, okay? There's no fluoride in the water up here, okay? We're filtering it out. What we're filtering out is the stuff that we need to filter out. All right, let's move on. Oh... Did you put chains on your Jeep yet? Yes, yes. I bought some really nice V-Bar chains. I'm really impressed with them. Well, so far, I'm pretty impressed with them. They went on easier than the ATV ones did. And even without putting chain tensioners on them, they're pretty darn tight. Got this little lever. And it goes through the chain, and then you just crank it over and hook it. Pretty awesome. Got the chains put on the front of the Jeep. Went to do the back. And I've got 31-inch tires on the Jeep. And there's only about three-eighths of an inch to a half of an inch clearance between the tire and the leaf spring. And I cannot fit the tire chains in that space. So I have to order some spacers to kick the wheels out on the back. Give me some clearance for those chains. And once there's four chains on that Jeep, that thing will be unstoppable. So right now I only got chains on the front, but we only use it to go up and down the mountain and we use it when we need it. The road was covered with ice just recently and even just with the chains on the front, we just creep up the road, does its job. How'd you like to drive down this slippery slope? And then in the spring when we don't need the chains anymore, I'll take the chains off, I'll take those wheel spacers on, put the tires back on, and I'll use it to kick around town with. Yeah. Alrighty, here's a you should moment. You should do more you shoulds. <laughs> I know some people really like these things. <laughs> okay, you should just put mothballs in your Jeep to keep the mice away. <laughs> no, I shouldn't. I shouldn't do that because I don't want my Jeep smelling like grandma's closet. So I'm not going to do that. I'm not putting mothballs in my shed, my workshop, under the camp, in the camp, in my vehicles and I don't care how good they work because they stink. Here's another you should. It's a good one though. You should make a photo book of your life. That's a really good idea, but um, I don't have to do that because if you want to see photos, if you go to the, um, the header of my YouTube channel on my homepage, there's a little tab there that says Friends of Frankie and the Boss. The link is also in the description right below where this video is playing. We have photo album in there. We just keep adding photos to that all the time. Lots and lots of photos of our life right there. You don't have to pay anything. And the same thing when we do cooking videos. People are asking about, oh, you should do a cookbook. Have you made a cookbook? Um, no, we put the recipes right on that page, just go to the Friends of Frankie and the Boss, click on the recipe tab, we've put them in there, and it's even in a downloadable format, so you can print them out. Doesn't cost you a cent. 
So that is it for now. I want to thank everyone for all your kind words and prayers. And uh, I've got another video coming at you real soon. And then another one with the camera information. So that's it. You have a wonderful day. All the best to you. And God bless. Frank and the boss out walking in the woods Living life happy and free Tracks in the snow everywhere they go There's a pokey way up in that tree A beaver built a pond where they have some fun Taking life a day at a time Best friends until the end Frankie and the boss Frankie and the boss Frankie and the boss